Did Pope Francis just pull a Bishop Strickland? I mean, did he just steal a little tip from Bishop Strickland, the guy he fired from his diocese? Hmm. In meeting with trans women, it seems like there might be a parallel here to Bishop Strickland and the now infamous usurper Pope letter from a friend speech in Rome. I want to get into those comparisons because I find it utterly fascinating. We're going to talk about the comparison between Pope Francis and Bishop Strickland next. By the way, my name is Joe McLean. I host a radio program called A Catholic Take, where we look at the world through a Catholic lens. I'd love for you to hang out with us. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and let us know what you think in the comments below. It's true. Pope Francis met with trans women over the weekend during the World Day of the Poor. I don't know what these two things have in common. You would think they would not, but nonetheless, there they are. At any rate, I want to talk to you about that meeting, what he did, what my opinion is of it, but I also want to compare that to Bishop Strickland, who gave the now infamous usurper Pope speech, the letter from a friend in Rome. I was there. I witnessed it firsthand. I even had a conversation with him. I have published my inter interview footage with him on my channel. You can check that out. I'll link to it. But I also put out a video addressing just the letter itself. His use of the letter, did he promote set of a contism? I'm linking to that. I encourage you to check that out as well. But yes, Pope Francis met with trans women over the weekend in Rome. He invited them to his auditorium and fed them lunch and they hung out. Praise be to God. That's a... A good thing. Yeah, my initial opinion is I don't have a problem with the Pope, the Vicar of Christ on Earth, the successor to St. Peter, meeting with anyone. He's the Vicar of Christ on Earth. He should be meeting with all kinds of people, heads of state, warlords, and people who struggle with sin of all stripes and all kinds. He should meet with all of them. Could you imagine what would happen if, say, the Vicar of Christ on Earth met with, say, Bill Clinton, or I don't know, uh, Nancy Pelosi, Joe Biden, Whoopi Goldberg. Amazing things could happen if the Vicar of Christ on earth met with these people and then called them to repentance and greater holiness and their lives changed and converted and they used their power, their influence, their prestige, their fandom to help do good in the world. Could you imagine that? I mean, just imagine if you met with people like Cardinal Zen or even Bishop Strickland to get their side of the story, to help promote and save them from communism. Oh, wait, hold on. Unfortunately, he didn't meet with Cardinal Zen or didn't call Bishop Strickland into the office, didn't give him an appeal process. So we don't get that other side of the story there. He only meets with Bill Clinton and Nancy Pelosi, anyone. Anyway, it gets tricky, doesn't it? Super fast. So my initial response is, I don't have a problem with the Pope meeting with trans women. That's not my issue. Meet them where they're at. That's good. Praise be to God. That's what St. Paul did. That's what all the apostles did. They met them where they're at and the complexities of their life, the difficulties, the challenges, and all of it. The real question is, what did he do with that opportunity? Did he call them to chastity and purity? Here's what the article over at the Associated Press seems to think about this meeting between trans women and the Pope. They say this is a landmark opportunity for their cause. Quote, prominent LGBTQ plus organizations have welcomed Francis's message of inclusivity, given gay and transgender people have long felt ostracized and, and discriminated against by a church that officially teaches that homosexual acts are intrinsically disordered. Starting from his famous, who am I to judge speech back in 2013 about a purportedly gay priest to his assertion back in January, less than a year ago now, that, quote, being homosexual is not a crime, close quote. Francis has evolved his position to increasingly make clear that everyone is a child of God, is loved by God, and welcomed in the church, close quote. That's the article. I'll link to it in the description for your perusal as well. They seem to think this is an amazing step forward, a le giant leap forward for their cause. They don't seem to mention anywhere in this article, nor was I able to find anywhere else where during this meeting, His Holiness, Pope Francis, called them to repentance, to a life of chastity and purity, to growing in virtue and in grace. No, uh, zero. It's complete radio silence. I have zero reportage on whether or not he met them where they're at 
And then even in a small way, even in a tiny little mustard seed of a way, try to get them to grow further towards the divine intimacy with God himself. Now, let me do this. Let me spin this as positively as I possibly can out of charity for His Holiness Pope Francis. Let me just be as charitable as I can, as positively as I can for Pope Francis. Let's just assume for the sake of the conversation, that is what he did. He met them in their complexity. He planted a seed in their heart and called them to a greater sense of chastity and purity, virtue and in holiness. Uh, A life of change, a life of repentance, because what we do with the reality of I am a child of the Most High God, made in His image and likeness, and I am welcomed in the church. What I do with that information is what matters most. Does that information affect my life? Does it affect the choices I make, the lifestyle that I live? Am I being harmful to myself and to others? Am I committing sins? And if so, should I stop that that behavior? That is what the reality of being a child of the Most High God and being welcomed to the church means. That's the conclusion of that information. So let's assume for the sake of this conversation to be as charitable as possible to His Holiness Pope Francis, that is what he did. Got it? Yeah, all right. You got that? I got it? All right, here we go. Now, let me ask you a question. Why was that same treatment not given to Bishop Strickland by so many who are now high-fiving, glad-handing, patting themselves on the back, saying he finally got what he deserved, finally got what he got coming to him because he was so mean on Twitter to His Holiness Pope Francis. And he just, you know, teaches the deposit of faith too darn much. And then, of course, he read this letter in Rome, this letter from a friend, this letter of the usurper Pope letter, Why didn't his opponents, why didn't his detractors spin this as positive as possible? Because they didn't. They didn't do that. They didn't give him a fair chance. They didn't spin this as positive as possible out of charity towards him, like I'm attempting to do for Pope Francis in meeting with people who struggle in life. I I struggle in life, and I'm glad when my priest meets me in the confessional and, you know, right where I'm at, and then calls me to a greater sense of holiness, of purity, You know what I mean? Like, that is how it's supposed to work. So I'm going to assume Pope Francis has done that. I don't know that. There's no proof of it, but I'm going to assume it for the sake of charity. Why don't they do that for for Bishop Strickland? I was there. I was in this room. I witnessed firsthand what he said, how he said it, and I interviewed him after, and I get the meaning of it. And I'm telling you, his detractors have not at all been charitable to him in the process. I did an entire video on this subject. I'm going to link to it. You can check it out. I'll also put the link to the entire interview that I did with him unedited so that you can see that as well. Now, here's the bottom line. Here's the bottom line. Bishop Strickland, if you're trying to be as charitable as possible and spin this as positively as possible, Bishop Strickland read the letter of a friend who is growing in frustration and is truly challenged because of the hypocrisy of what we're seeing happening in the world around us today. And dare I say, coming even out of the Vatican. It seems hypocritical to, to uh, you know, promote men like Rupnik who have molested religious women and keep them out of trouble. Like, you know, lifting their excommunication, for instance, and making sure they get a job back in Slovakia or Slovenia or wherever he's from, I don't know. It seems rather hypocritical to let men like that get a pass without being charged, without being investigated. I mean, they are now because so much pressure has has come up as a result. And then not meet with Cardinal Zen, letting Cardinal Zen sit at St. Peter's Square waiting for an office. A prince of the church did not get a meeting with His Holiness when transgendered women in Italy get a meeting with His Holiness, but Cardinal Zen doesn't get a meeting. Bishop Strickland got relieved of his position with no appeal. He does not get an opportunity to meet with the Pope and explain himself, or at least his side of the equation. Why could it not be that we spin this as positive as possible and we see that Bishop Strickland simply read the letter of someone who was growing in concern as a result to all of that? At no time did Bishop Strickland agree to that sentiment, either before, during, or after the reading of that letter. So what does he do next? 
He met him where he's at in the complexities of life, smelling like the sheep in the sense of accompaniment. He meets him right there in that moment, discipleship. What does he do next? Bishop Strickland, the next thing he does is tell you and me and his friend who wrote the letter to go deeper, to grow in faith and fidelity and holiness, to go deeper. In an age of confusion and error, We must go deeper. We must be faithful and zealous. We must be more holy and virtuous. We must go deeper. His response in meeting us in the complexities where we're at is to challenge us to go deeper. All right. I ask the question. If I'm being as charitable as possible to this encounter, met them in their complexities, met them where where they're at, and then challenged them to go deeper. Here's the difference between this, what Bishop Strickland did, and what Pope Francis has done, is that I have zero evidence to actually back up that Francis did that, planted even a mustard seed of grow towards chastity and purity in the hearts. I'm hoping and praying he did. I'm hoping and praying he did because I would want that of the vicar of Christ on earth. I can tell you 100% sure that that's exactly what Bishop Strickland did. I know because I was there. I talked to him personally personally and I have the receipts. That is the deal. That is the hypocrisy we're seeing. So I want to leave you with this, these two parallel stories that seem to have something of interest, because if Pope Francis did that, then he only did what Bishop Strickland was doing to a room of challenged Catholics, Catholics who are sick and tired of seeing the hypocrisy fester and grow in the world around us. The German Schnodel way gets a pass. And people like Cardinal Zinn, Cardinal Mueller, and Bishop Strickland get retired. It's hypocrisy. I leave you with the dying words of a pope. Pope St. Peter himself, in his last will and testament, says this. If by turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, he commended them to extinction and made them an example to those who were to be ungodly, and if he rescued righteous Lot greatly distressed by the licentiousness of the wicked, for by what that righteous man saw and heard as he lived among them, he was vexed in his righteous soul day after day with their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trial and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment, and especially those who indulge in the lust of defiling passion and despise authority. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is forbearing toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and the works that are upon it will be burned up. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of persons ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be kindled and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But according to his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you wait for these, be zealous to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace, and count the forbearance of our Lord as salvation. For also our beloved Paul wrote to you according to the wisdom given him, speaking of this as he does in all his letters. There are some things in them hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do the other scriptures. You, therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, beware, lest you be carried away by the error of lawless men and lose your own stability. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen.